Welcome to Easel. So let's start off by selecting the material we're using and entering the dimensions that match the piece we have on the machine. In my case, it's 100 millimeters by 100 millimeters with a thickness of 3 millimeters. So you see the image update. You can also change the color if you want to select a different color, but I'll just stick with the default. To our left, we've got uh, many options, but we're going to enter text. So click the T and select a font that you like. These are the fonts that are available, but I like, uh, I like bangers. It's bold and the letters are, are easy to, to engrave. With your font selected, if you look to your right, you can see how deep your text will be engraved onto the material. So I'm going to change the text to Tentronics. And as you can see, it doesn't fit in our work area. So what I need to do is to resize it such that it fits there. Above, you can see something that says cut and uh, with the different depths. I'm going to leave mine at one millimeters, but if you want a deeper cut, you can lower it or increase it. But uh, for me, one millimeters works. So next to cost acrylic, click bits and you'll see the different options. We're going to go down to the bottom and click other, then select millimeters and enter the thickness of the bit. So I'm going to start off by entering three millimeters so you can see the effect of putting a bit that's too thick. So if you see, we selected three millimeters and if you look at the drawing, the O and the R don't come out clearly. So change it again. And now you can see that all the letters and numbers come out clearly. So a two millimeter bit in this case would work perfectly or a one millimeter bit, but it, you, you need to make sure you select what will work. So click okay. And you can see that it's highlighted Tentronics. Click simulate to see how the bit is going to travel and engrave and you can see the tool path that the bit will follow. So fast forward it and we're happy. It tells you it's about four minutes, but uh, that will vary based on the machine. So in our case, we haven't set up the machine settings yet. So with our simulation complete, let's now rename the project and then set up the machine such that uh, it matches the machine we have. So if you look to your top right, uh, top left corner, sorry, it says Untitled, click Untitled. In my case, I'm going to rename the project to Tentronics and then click OK. It saves and it updates. It's, and then we've got some menus that we're going to explore until we find the place where we can edit the machine. So imports, apps, icons, text, drill, line tool, shapes. You can minimize it, you can show it, and then we'll click uh, Save All Changes, File, you can see all the different options you have there. If you say you want to pl publish, Publish will publish your work to Inventables and everybody will be able to see it. So if you want to make a project that many people can download, you would click Publish. And let's say you've finished the project, you can upload a picture so people see what it will look like. Sharing would be sharing it to a friend or some other person you'd like help from or you'd like them to see it. So usually uh, you'd like to invert your image such that when you engrave it, you engrave on the top side and then you look at it from the back side where it's not engraved. So there's machine and we'll select GRBL and if your machine is on the list, select it. If not, select other. You can enter the dimensions and size of your machine. Otherwise, you just click setup. If you click cut settings, it has the automatically suggested settings based on what you've been designing and selecting the, the machine. 
So it will select your feed rate, your plunge rate, and your depth per pass, and in what pattern it will cut along. Or you can select manual and then enter these dimensions or enter these settings yourself. In my case, um, I'm going to enter manual and tell it to cut. Well, okay, so half a millimeter is, is good, but I will change my feed rate to 100 and change my plunge to something less. Change my plunge to like 50. Half of my feed rate. And then I'll save that as is. So now it's just a matter of exporting the G-code. So in Easel, it took me a while to find out that you need to go back to machine and click advanced. So click generate G-code and then click export. It will download your exported G-code. Then open up your tool that you use to connect to your machine and load your G-code there. In my case, it's Candle. What I'll do is I'll drag over Tentronix into Candle, and then you can see how it will look when I start. So that's the same as the simulation that we saw. The only difference now is that I'm actually going to connect the machine and run everything. So you can see the acrylic gloss is being engraved on the machine, but um, in my mind, I forgot I selected a two millimeter bit. However, I used the one millimeter bit and it still came out okay. Uh, you won't be lucky like this in all, in most cases. So make sure that if you select a two millimeter bit, you use a two millimeter bit. But uh, as you can see the final results, they don't look too bad. And I ended up using a green LED strip.